Item Number SCP-045 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-045 is to be kept affixed to an examination platform in a hemispherical chamber measuring 5 meters in radius at Oceanographic Research Station 12, located at on the sea floor of the Pacific Ocean. The chamber is to be kept filled with gaseous neon at equilibrium pressure with the surrounding environment. The chamber is separated from habitable portions of the station by 5 meters of local seawater, and all interactions with SCP-045 are to be performed via telepresence or robotic means. The bindings that attach SCP-045 to its platform are fitted with quick-release latches, which are to be released when necessary to prevent a containment breach. Given the seismic activity associated with SCP-045, if the containment chamber is damaged or breached by seismological activity, SCP-045 should be recovered by remotely controlled drone vehicles and kept at least 10 meters from human inhabited spaces until such a time as repairs can be completed to the optimal containment chamber. Description SCP-045 is an icosahedron composed of ice-12, a metastable form of water ice that is typically formed only within a narrow range of very high pressures and temperatures. The ice is heavily occluded with planar fractures in a regular complex pattern. SCP-045 has an average radius of 1.7 meters and density of 2.6 grams per centimeter cubed, which is approximately twice that of non-anomalous ice-12. SCP-045 remains in a stable state at temperatures ranging from 0.074 to 500 Kelvin, approximately negative 273 degrees Celsius to 227 degrees Celsius, and pressures ranging from 0.4 pascals to 3 gigapascals, approximately 3.95 microatmospheres to 29,600 atmospheres. Although it is possible to melt or vaporize SCP-045 at temperatures and pressures outside of these ranges, the H2O involved is attracted to itself by unknown means and will remain within very close proximity unless forcibly separated. The water will refreeze as soon as conditions return to a position inside SCP-045's stable range, and any subportions kept separate prior to refreezing will freeze into smaller icosahedrons, identical in form and properties to the total amount of SCP-045. Based on available evidence, it is currently believed that SCP-045 is a three-dimensional projection of a hypericosahedron, a regular polyhedron that exists in four spatial dimensions and has 600 regular tetrahedral facets. Research is ongoing to determine how SCP-045 is able to maintain a stable lower-dimensional projection and whether this can be adapted for use when interacting with other dimensionally anomalous SCP items. At unpredictable intervals ranging from two weeks to three months, SCP-045 will spontaneously rotate around multiple axes simultaneously for a period no longer than 73 seconds. During this period, a series of small seismic events, less than 2.5 on the Richter scale, will occur in the immediate area of SCP-045. If SCP-045 is prevented from rotating, the seismic events increase in strength logarithmically to a maximum of 5.3 on the Richter scale. Following the end of the rotation period, the radius of SCP-045's effect will temporarily double for the same amount of time that it rotated. When gaseous nitrogen or argon come within 3.7 meters of any portion of SCP-045, they are replaced by different compounds. Dinitrogen is replaced by liquid water at a conversion rate of 1 molecule dinitrogen to 1.98 molecules H2O, and argon is replaced by crystalline sodium chloride, or table salt, at a conversion rate of 1 molecule argon to 4.26 molecules sodium chloride. SCP-045 was discovered in 1972 when a Foundation submarine scouting the Pacific Abyssal Plain for suitable locations for undersea bases was diverted to investigate the epicenter of a series of unexpectedly localized and strong tremors. SCP-045 was found lodged in a crevice, which had apparently prevented it from rotating. When removed from the crevice, it was brought towards the vessel for further study, and, upon coming within range of the interior atmosphere, exhibited its anomalous effects. 
This resulted in a catastrophic breach of internal containment protocols and the loss of 12 crew members prior to SCP-045 being released and the submarine moving out of range. Addendum Following several years of testing, it was accidentally discovered that SCP-045 also converts hydrogen gas into a random mixture of simple amino acids at a rate of 1 molecule hydrogen to 0.04 molecules amino acids. However, this conversion only occurs when the gas is diffused in saline water, such as that produced by SCP-045. Analysis of the sea floor surrounding the location where SCP-045 was discovered has revealed a large community of microfauna and microflora that is approximately three times as diverse as would be expected given the geography and location. All have biochemistry, wherein the amino acids produced by SCP-045 are statistically overabundant as compared to microbiota from similar geologic regions. Additionally, all thrive when immersed in pure salt water devoid of other organic materials. Item Number SCP-059 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures A single specimen of SCP-059 is kept at Site 11B inside a graded Z laminate shielding box composed of depleted uranium, tantalum, tin, steel, copper, and aluminum. Surrounding SCP-059's containment box is a 7 meter by 7 meter by 7 meter area sealed as a level 4 biohazard area and surrounded by 3 centimeters of lead shielding. This area is to be sprayed daily with a solution of methyl isothiocyanate to prevent overgrowth of SCP-059-1. Personnel entering an SCP-059 affected area are cautioned to wear appropriate biohazard protection as well as type K-59-B radiation shielding. They are to remain in the area for no more than 15 minutes as the radiation shielding is only partially effective. SCP-059-1 infestations found in the wild should be contained by removing the SCP-059 specimen responsible and incineration of all observed SCP-059-1. Large underground infestations are best neutralized by fuel-air thermobaric explosives. Additional specimens of SCP-059 are not needed for experimentation and should be transported to Site 11B for incineration by plasma arc at 10,000 Kelvin. Description SCP-059 is a radioactive mineral of unknown origin, superficially resembling shelite. A component of SCP-059 is believed to originate in an alternate universe and to be responsible for its anomalous properties, in addition to alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. SCP-059 specimens produce a previously unknown type of radiation, apparently unique to the object, tentatively designated Delta Radiation. Delta Radiation is accompanied by Cherenkov Radiation, visible as a blue glow. Delta Radiation is only partially contained by standard radiation shielding. The best results have been obtained using Grade Z laminate shielding with an additional super-dense metal layer. This reduces the effective range of Delta Radiation from approximately 20 meters to approximately 6 meters. When an area is exposed to delta radiation for more than 15 minutes, an unknown species of fungus, designated SCP-059-1, begins to grow on any exposed surface. This fungus does not require any standard nutrition, but will die within 24 hours of removal from a delta radiation source. SCP-059-1 is itself radioactive, but does not emit delta radiation. However, if a critical mass of SCP-051-1 is allowed to grow, delta radiation from an unknown source other than SCP-059 will appear in the area, further supporting SCP-059-1's growth. Interested readers may consult Dr. for his theories of space-time stress and merger of alternate realities. Within 18 hours, the infected mass will become transparent and disappear, presumably into the universe that is a source of delta radiation. The process then continues, with SCP-059-1 infecting new material. SCP-059-1 will infest both living beings and inanimate objects. Humans and animals infected with SCP-059-1 become immune to the effects of ionizing radiation, but progressively merge with SCP-059-1 and eventually have all tissues replaced by fungal growth. While generally non-violent, they will attempt to expose unaffected individuals to SCP-059. 
SCP-059-1 infections do not appear to be directly contagious, but only spread by contact with Delta radiation. However, long-term exposure to SCP-059-1 has not been adequately tested to rule out considering it a biohazard, as well as a known radiation hazard. Infected individuals still capable of communication describe seeing a world entirely covered with SCP-059-1, where much of the surface is composed of SCP-059. It is unclear whether this is a hallucination or a view into the source of SCP-059. Infectees are generally pleased with their condition and often refer to being in the blue light of heaven. SCP-059-1 is affected by most fungicides, but new growth will continue as long as SCP-059 is present. Early stage SCP-059-1 infection in humans may be treated with griseofulvin. However, the treatment is 90% likely to lead to death by radiation poisoning. Treated individuals lose their immunity to radiation and will already have absorbed a now lethal dose prior to treatment. Late stage treatment should not be attempted, as too much tissue will already be converted to SCP-059-1. The remains of failed treatments should be kept out of range of SCP-059. Otherwise, data expunged. SCP-059 specimens have been discovered in eight different underground locations across a range of 5,000 kilometers. No pattern has emerged for their appearance. Specimens range from 1 to 10 kilograms in size and are not part of the normal rock formations in the areas where they have been found. Addendum Dr. has recorded and analyzed the patterns of radiation emitted by the contained SCP-059-1 colony and believes SCP-059-1 may be sapient in attempting to communicate via controlled emissions of radiation. Initial attempts to analyze this language reveal data expunged. Item Number SCP-062 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-062 is stored in a dedicated containment cell at site under clean room conditions. Any experimentation on SCP-062 must receive prior permission from at least two Level 3 personnel and must only be performed with independent power sources. SCP-062 must never be attached to an external network, and all data extracted from SCP-062 is to be stored on external non-volatile media until analyzed. Description SCP-062 appears to be an unbranded personal desktop computer housed in an aluminum case of indeterminate manufacture. SCP-062 is unusually heavy at approximately 24 kilograms and lacks manufacturing or branding labels of any kind. The words information is freedom, sick, were found scratched into the casing near the back, apparently with a key or similar object. Inspection of its interior has revealed that SCP-062 is empty, except for a blank circuit board in place of where the motherboard of a standard personal computer would be. SCP-062 will not function unless the case is completely sealed, and attempts to open the case while it is operating cause it to shut down immediately. Despite this, SCP-062 operates as expected for a normal desktop computer, with the exception that its performance, operating system, contained data, and language appears to be different upon every activation. SCP-062 was discovered in the basement of an undisclosed university computer science laboratory. An embedded Foundation agent seized the object and brought it to site where it has since been contained. Addendum 062-001 List of notable activation results Date Undisclosed Description SCP-062 appears to be running Windows XP in Catalan. Analysis of contained data showed financial records for the banking firm in France for the period of May 1963 to April 1987. These records are inconsistent with actual bank records procured by undercover Foundation agents. Date Undisclosed Description SCP-062 appears to be running Debian Linux in Latin. Contained data consisted of a library of audio recordings of numeral choral songs and hymns, of which several are not found in any known collection or have never been performed. Date Undisclosed Description SCP-062 appeared to be running a version of Solaris in Portuguese. Contained data consisted of promotional and marketing material for 
which appears to be a commercial spaceflight corporation that does not exist. Date Undisclosed Description SCP-062 appeared to be running an unknown operating system, visually similar to OS-2, with an unknown language, later identified to have strong similarities to that of the Voynich Manuscript. Attempts at deciphering the contained data are ongoing. Date Undisclosed Description SCP-062 appeared to be running in French. Contained data confirmed to be that of a standard Foundation workstation, though the site indicated by its location data does not exist. Investigation is ongoing. Date Undisclosed Description SCP-062 appeared to be running Apple OS X in what appears to be a Cadian cuneiform script. Contained data appears to be composed mainly of religious text and descriptions of ritual and ceremonial procedures. Date Undisclosed Description Data expunged Investigation is ongoing as to how the virus managed to compromise three workstations and one file server before SCP-062 was forcibly shut down. All affected workstations have been isolated. From Dr. To Director Maria Jones, Record Keeping and Information Security Administration Subject Revision of SCP-076 SCP file I have to go on record as saying that I seriously object to the proposed revisions of the SCP-076 Special Containment Procedures file. I know that Redact All Important Stuff already claims it's a security risk, but you and I both know it's just top brass trying to sweep their biggest and most embarrassing mistake ever under the damn rug. Omega-7 happened. It existed. Those people died because you screwed up. And you can't change that, no matter how hard you try to hide it. For God's sake, man. Those people guarding him deserve to know exactly what he is and what he did. What we did. How we f***ed up, so they'll know better. Dr. Item number. SCP-076. Object Class. Keter. Special Containment Procedures. Containment Area 25B is to be located 200 meters below sea level, tunneled out of solid bedrock in a seismologically stable area. Sole access to the containment facility is to be through a vertical elevator shaft, separated every 50 meters with a reinforced blast door, constructed of 20 centimeter thick material shielding. Elevator shaft shall be flooded with seawater when not in use. Containment Area 25B is to be constructed with the following components. An outer security perimeter against outside threats, staffed by security personnel trained in close quarters battle and counter intrusion tactics. An administrative and support area, ASA, consisting of support facilities and living quarters for on site personnel. A primary containment zone, PCZ, consisting of a 7 meter cube encased in 1.5 meters of reinforced material. PCZ is said to be designed to be flooded and drained as needed and should remain filled with seawater unless access to contents is required. A 150 meter killing corridor, which is to be the sole access to the PCZ from the ASA, including water, power, drainage, and ventilation lines. The walls and floor of the corridor are to be reinforced in a similar manner to the PCZ, with the addition of an electric deterrent system, capable of delivering a 20,000 volt shock. A security station located at the entrance to the killing corridor is to be staffed with no fewer than three armed security personnel on watch at any one point in time. Armament is to include, but not be limited to, at least one CIW system on a pintle mount, with a clear line of sight down the corridor, with a plexiglass screen to protect the operator from thrown weapons. In the event of a full breach, all on-site staff are to proceed immediately to the closest security station for weapons and armor distribution. Staff will remain at Alert Condition 1 until SCP-076-2 is confirmed and neutralized. Should 90 minutes pass after declaration of full breach without a stand-down order being given by Level 4 or higher personnel, final contingency measures will be activated, flooding the entire facility in seawater and sealing off the access shaft for a minimum of 24 hours before retrieval is attempted. This will, by necessity, result in the deaths of all on-site staff. Description SCP-076 consists of two components, a stone cube, SCP-076-1, 
and a humanoid entity contained within, SCP-076-2. SCP-076-1 is a 3-meter cube made of black speckled metamorphic stone. All surfaces outside and within SCP-076-1 are covered in deeply engraved patterns, corresponding to no known civilizations. Radioisotope analysis indicates that the object is approximately 10,000 years old. A door is located on one side, sealed with a lock 0.5 meters in width, surrounded by 20 smaller locks in a circular pattern. As of yet, none of the keys have been found, making the door impossible to lock once closed. Interior temperature is approximately 93 Kelvin and cannot be altered by any means, internal or external. Directly in the center of the room is a 2.13 meter tall stone coffin, held in place and sealed shut by several chains of unknown make and substance, which are attached to the inner corners of SCP-076-1. SCP-076-2 resembles a lean Semitic human male in his late twenties. Hair is black and eyes are gray, skin tone olive. Subject is 1.96 meters in height and 81.65 kilograms in weight. Numerous tattoos depicting arcane and occult iconography are present all over the body, mostly in the form of leering demonic faces, and ranges from subtle to openly ostentatious. Subject, when encased inside SCP-076-1, is technically dead. However, occasionally SCP-076-2 will awaken, effectively reanimating, complete with all vital processes needed to sustain a living human being. Subject will then attempt to leave SCP-076-1. If successful, subject will enter a trance state and seek out the nearest human being, ignoring all other living things in the process. Upon coming into contact with living humans, SCP-076-2 will enter a rage state in which it attempts to engage and kill all human beings encountered. To date, only the subject's death has been shown to be effective in ending these rampages. Terminating SCP-076-2 is often problematic due to its significant physical abilities. Subject has superhuman strength and speed, and although not invulnerable, has shown a remarkable ability to ignore pain and shock, pressing on despite what would be debilitating wounds in normal humans. Prior encounters have shown that SCP-076-2 has the ability to among other things, rip through a reinforced steel security door over the course of four minutes of sustained assault, clear over 64 meters of distance in under three seconds, take multiple 50 caliber BMG rounds to the head, and survive for several minutes to continue killing despite severe damage to the cerebellum, swat handgun and assault rifle caliber bullets out of the air with a length of steel rebar survive for over one hour deprived of oxygen before finally asphyxiating. SCP-076-2's most unusual ability, however, is its ability to apparently materialize bladed weapons out of nowhere. Slow motion video footage reveals that the blades in question are actually pulled from a miniature dimensional rift described as a small hole in space. Where this portal leads is unknown as is how SCP-076-2 is capable of generating said rifts. Footage of the blades in question shows them to be made out of a completely non-reflective black material, appearing as a black void in space. As the blades rapidly vanish after leaving the subject's possession, no structural analysis is possible at this time. SCP-076-2 has effectively been killed several times, in various manners sustained fire from multiple heavy caliber machine guns, asphyxiation, crushed beneath a 13.6 metric ton piece of elevator equipment for use on SCP-076-1, cremation through the use of a Thermate TH3 grenade placed directly inside SCP-076-2's open chest cavity. During the worst breach to date, Containment Area 25, which previously housed SCP-076, was forced to detonate its on-site warhead as a last attempt to contain SCP-076-2 while it was attempting escape, resulting in total destruction of the site and all on-site personnel. SCP-076-1 survived. Upon death, SCP-076-2's remains will putrefy rapidly until reduced to dust, 
SCP-076-1 and the coffin within will then slam shut with great force, and the lock will rotate, sealing it shut. SCP-076-2 will then reform within the coffin, a process taking anywhere from 6 hours to 25 years. What posthumous analysis of SCP-076-2 exists shows that it has an internal system highly different from our own, documented and data expunged. Additional, SCP-076 was found in Mongolia in 18 by archaeologists from England. All members of the expedition were subsequently killed on the return voyage home. SCP-076 was recovered from the ship by the Society, one of the organizations that later merged into the modern Global Occult Coalition, and placed on display in their inner sanctum. SCP-076 remained in storage for several years, until SCP-076-2 became active and escaped. The reason for SCP-076's activation is currently unknown, but it was at this point that the keys to the outer shell were lost. A massive manhunt, lasting over three years, took place until SCP-076-2 was incapacitated by killing it and causing it to reform inside SCP-076-1, by then retrieved and secured by agents of the SCP Foundation. Subject was in custody for three more years, under constant supervision, and was terminated whenever it became active, although it occasionally was able to escape for short periods of time, often due to security breaches caused by attacks from other organizations. The Foundation's death toll due to this was data expunged. After the last incident, the current procedures regarding SCP-076 were implemented, although they are upgraded regularly with the increase in technological standards. Addendum 076-2, Project ABLE, and Mobile Task Force Omega-7 All information regarding Project ABLE and Mobile Task Force Omega-7, Pandora's Box, is classified Q clearance by order of the O5 Council. By proceeding, you are acknowledging that you have clearance to view these files, and that you have received need-to-know permission from the appropriate Level 4 or higher authority. From Director Maria Jones Record Keeping and Information Security Administration 2. Level 4 Administrators Subject Reza Update to Security Protocol Supplemental Information SCP-076 File Name Addendum 076-1 Project ABLE and Mobile Task Force Omega-7 Prior Classification 05 New Classification Level 3 Need to Know Basis Psychological Profile of Subject SCP-076-2 SCP-076-2 either possesses a mind constructed much differently than our own, or is completely insane, with little empathy or ideas in a way we would understand it. Concepts such as sex, love, and equality are completely foreign ideas to SCP-076-2, or at least in comparison to its ways of viewing them. Subject has shown that it is completely disinterested in sex, barely differentiating between genders except as a form of visual identification. Also, while Subject has admitted greatly enjoying the act of killing, causing pain, either emotionally or physically, holds no attraction to it. In short, a perfect sociopath. Intelligence tests have been wildly inconclusive when applied to SCP-076-2, and no accurate result has yet been obtained. This may be due to the alien thought processes of the subject. SCP-076-2 has, however, shown that it has great knowledge of human anatomy, although in a highly violent context. Military tactics of open warfare, metallurgy, and strangely enough, the care of livestock. Subject has knowledge of several languages including English, but most notable is its knowledge of several dialects of ancient Sumerian, which seem to be its preferred language. SCP-076 has nothing but contempt for human beings, with one exception. It seems to hold a wary respect for those it acknowledges as its superior. This was discovered when an agent who had previously had a large amount of experience with SCP-076-2 did not appear once it escaped. Subject seemed distressed, asking several personnel where said agent was hiding. When it finally did learn of the fate of said agent, killed as collateral damage in an airstrike intended to halt the advance of SCP. SCP-076-2 stopped its rampage and allowed itself to be escorted and restrained. 
Subject was then interviewed on the sudden drastic changes in its behavior. Begin log. Doctor, why are you so interested in the death of Agent SCP-076-2? Subject begins swearing in Ancient Sumerian. Doctor, why does his death bother you? You've killed many humans before. Why is he so? Is cut off by SCP-076-2. SCP-076-2, now speaking in English. Different? Because, unlike you, Sumerian word untranslated. He was a challenge. A real enemy. Doctor, why would that be good for you? Every time you have awoken, you've tried to escape. He was responsible for apprehending you several times. Surely you must be glad he's dead. SCP-076-2, I would hardly expect you to understand. Do you know, he managed to shoot me in the head numerous times. A man like that deserves to die in combat. So close to his opponent, he can feel his breath. Not in some... Sumerian words untranslated. Destruction. Ordered by cowardly kings and princes safe in their palaces. The rest of you. SCP-076-2 spits. You disgust me. I don't even have the urge to strike you down. Subject is silent from then on, refusing to speak or respond. End log. This indicates a possible psychological inlet into SCP-076-2's mind and a possible control mechanism. Given the massive drain on resources SCP-076-2 causes due to its escape attempts, and considering Bowie Commission's stated desire to weaponize SCP objects for tactical purposes, I recommend that we pursue this course of action as soon as possible. Dr. P.G. From Dr. To Dr. P.G. Project Omega-7. Subject. He said yes. Dr. Project Proposal. Mobile Task Force Omega-7. Pandora's Box. Mission Statement. Support of SCP-076-2. Able. In the field. In high-risk tactical situations. Task Force Organization. Task Force Special Asset Able. Task Force Leader. 10 to 20 field agents divided into 5 teams of 3 to 5 each. Members of the team are to be personally selected from elite field agents by Subject Abel himself, in order to maintain a smooth relationship between the artifact and the mundane elements of the task force. Security Protocol SCP-076-2 Abel is to wear a device attached to the neck that, if triggered or tampered with, will immediately detonate terminating SCP-076-2 by way of complete destruction of the spinal cord, trachea, and all major blood vessels in the neck. A tracking device has also been attached to SCP-076-2's person. It is to refrain from killing unless ordered to do so, and is to avoid causing damage to the organization's facilities. Armament and Equipment Team members are to be armed and equipped in accordance with MTF doctrine. As Subject Abel has shown no inclination to use firearms, or, in fact, no understanding of their use or tactical implications, he is instead to be armed with one or more edged melee weapons of his choice. Addendum. For God's sake, find these guys something to do. Abel's getting bored, and he started putting his team through live fire exercises. They get bullets. He gets training weapons. Have you ever seen someone break a man's jaw using a Nerf sword? He's not going to stop until someone gets killed. Dr. Report by Dr. P.G., Project Omega-7. In light of SCP-076-2's proficient use of the Sumerian language, researchers have asked it to translate several documents. While it originally replied with disinterest, it has translated some of the documents it found worthy of its attention. Most of the documents chosen by SCP-076-2 were regarding battles or legendary heroes one of its favorites in particular being the Epic of Gilgamesh. However, one researcher presented it with a symbol from SCP-073. Upon sight of this, SCP-076-2 became highly enraged, killing several of the researchers before its kill switch could be activated. When revived and questioned about this, SCP-076-2 responded aggressively, and that line of questioning was immediately dropped. It is recommended anything pertaining SCP-073 never be brought to the attention of SCP-076-2, and that the two are never to be in the same facility. Addendum 076-07 Recently, SCP-105 has been accepted into Mobile Task Force Omega-7, 
having beaten SCP-076-2 in a contest to see which of the two can activate several devices, each spaced over a mile away from each other in the starting point. SCP-105 managed to score significantly higher than SCP-076-2 by using her inherent abilities to her advantage. SCP-076-2 seeded defeat and allowed her entry into the group. Addendum 076-09 Proposed introduction of SCP-076-2 to SCP-682 put on indefinite hold. Those with security clearance level 4 or higher may request access to Contingency 076-2 number 3. Addendum 076-23 Per the request of the Bowie Commission, Mobile Task Force Omega-7 is to be fielded and data expunged. From Dr. To Dr. P.G. Project Omega-7 Subject Don't do it, P. For God's sake, don't do it. It's bad enough that they're trying to weaponize Iris, too. Don't let the military bully us into doing their dirty work against some sand farmers. Dr. From General Bowie To Dr. P.G. Project Omega-7 Subject A job well done. Excellent work, Doctor. The mission went exactly as expected. We'll be calling you again if we need your help. General Bowie From Dr. To Dr. P.G. Project Omega-7 Subject I hope you're f***ing proud of yourself, mother because you're a bigger asshole than this guy. From Dr. P.G. Project Omega-7 To Omega-7 Team Subject Reassignment As of this moment, Dr. has been reassigned to SCP-682 as Level 1 personnel. Data expunged. From Dr. P.G. Project Omega-7 To General Bowie Subject Problems Despite our best efforts, Subject Abel is proving difficult to control. All our attempts to keep him engaged have been more or less unsuccessful. The problem is, he's a perfect killing machine, and that's all he wants to do. Which seems like exactly what we wanted, but the problem is, we can't seem to turn him off. I'm running out of missions to give him, and the ones I've got left aren't engaging him mentally. He's starting to lash out at the other team members. It's only a matter of time before something goes wrong. Requesting permission to discontinue the project and neutralize Abel temporarily, until we can find something more for him to do. From General Bowie To Dr. P.G. Project Omega-7 Subject Regarding Problems Unacceptable Neutralizing Subject Abel at this point is going to cause us an unacceptable delay. We'll have another mission for you within a couple of weeks. All you have to do is keep him busy until then. Send him on vacation or something. From Dr. P.G. Project Omega-7 To All Staff Subject Alert This is an automated alert. SCP-076-2 has disabled the explosive collar failsafe and gone out of control. All staff to high alert. Further requests as events warrant. From Automated Defense System Containment Area 25 To All Sites Subject Final option engaged. This is an automated message. Do not reply. As of Containment Area 25 has engaged its on-site nuclear warhead on 10-minute countdown. From O5 Command To All Sites Subject Containment Area 25 Final Option Response Containment Area 25 has been destroyed by detonation of its on-site nuclear warhead. Sites 67 and 68 are to activate the FEMA protocol and secure the location as soon as possible. Official cover story will be released by RISA to all personnel once drafted. Revised Psychological Profile of Subject SCP-076-2 SCP-076-2 either possesses a mind constructed much differently than our own, or is completely insane, with little empathy or ideas in a way we would understand it. Concepts such as sex, love, and equality are completely foreign ideas to SCP-076-2 or at least in comparison to its way of viewing them. The subject has shown that it is completely disinterested in sex, barely differentiating between genders except as a form of visual identification. Also, while subject seems to greatly enjoy the act of killing, causing pain, either emotionally or physically, holds no attraction to it. Intelligence tests have been wildly inconclusive when applied to SCP-076-2, and no accurate result has yet been obtained. 
This is due to the fact that no communication is possible with the subject when in its rage state. Subject displays knowledge of several languages, including English, but most notable is its knowledge of several dialects of ancient Sumerian, which seem to be its preferred language. SCP-076 has nothing but contempt for human beings, and will kill them on sight. No communication is to be attempted with the subject. End Mobile Task Force Omega-7 Incident Log Item Number SCP-083 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-083 is to be kept under constant video surveillance, with at least one Level 3 staff member on call at all times to respond to security breaches. Entrance to SCP-083 is permissible to Level 1 and 2 personnel, with proper clearances, provided they wear a tracking device while inside. Description SCP-083 appears to be an uninhabited two-story row house, in a general state of disrepair, with an interior of approximately 366 square meters. The deed and property tax records for the address are missing. The last known persons to reside at the address were the family, but data expunged. Until acquisition by the Foundation, the property was the reputed office for local narcotics dealers, who gained entry to the structure through a front window, since the locking mechanisms on both the front and back doors were corroded and frozen shut. SCP-083 first came to the Foundation's attention when an altercation outside of the building resulted in the front door being kicked in by data expunged. Those who entered through the door of SCP-083, Group A, allegedly found themselves inside a fully furnished and well-maintained home with functioning electricity and a fully stocked kitchen whose appliances and decor appeared to be from the early 20th century. Personnel who entered through the windows, Group B, described the interior as dark and dilapidated, corresponding to the view through the windows. Personnel in Group A also reported that they couldn't see, hear, or find any members of Group B inside the house, or of anyone else besides themselves. Group B observed that members of Group A seemed to vanish into thin air upon crossing the door's threshold. Both groups inside the property not only described very different living conditions, but their descriptions didn't even correspond to the same floor plan. Their descriptions matched only in the relative position of the windows, since both groups saw the same street view. Personnel outside the house, however, reported only seeing members of Group B. These observations were repeatedly tested and confirmed by staff, with the additional finding that the rear door of SCP-083 also leads to the furnished interior. Any non-conventional entry, i.e. windows, holes in the roof, down the chimney, etc., leads to the dilapidated interior, and persons inside the different interiors are unable to detect each other's presence, although they both register on standard spectral imaging equipment so long as said equipment is outside SCP-083. It was also discovered that the furnished interior is not static. The floor plan of SCP-083 apparently changes, with a different layout and different numbers and kinds of rooms manifesting. No clear pattern or set interval has been observed in the rearrangement of the interior of SCP-083, but the phenomenon has never been directly observed or experienced by personnel while inside SCP-083. So long as a human presence exists inside, the floor plan seems to remain stable. Although the furnished interior appears to be well maintained, no inhabitants or custodians have ever been detected. Addendum: It has been recommended that SCP-083 be evaluated as a possible autonomous object. Document 083-A 19 walkthroughs of SCP-083 have been conducted to date and each has produced a unique floor plan, with a combined total of 154 different rooms, with 17 of those rooms present on more than one walkthrough, though in differing locations. The rooms conform to a variety of decorative styles, representative of major artistic trends of the late 19th and 20th centuries, complete with era-appropriate furnishings and technology. However, each of the 19 floor plans still equaled 366 square meters of space, and in each walkthrough, the front door has so far consistently led directly to the same Victorian front parlor, designated FP0. The rear door data expunged. Addendum to 083A 
Upon comparative analysis of all recorded floor plans for SCP-083, it has been observed that the small door in the north wall of FP-0 always opens up to reveal a closet. Though the dimensions and contents of the closets have varied considerably, a teal and white, deluxe convertible upright Hoover vacuum cleaner has been observed among the contents over 60% of the time. It is unknown why, of the three doors leading from FP-0, this one, and the Hoover vacuum within, has shown such a high level of conservation when none of the others have. Document 083C Summary of Experiment 083-03 on Dr. entered SCP-083 through the front door and set up three digital video cameras. One was placed in the middle of FP-0, a second camera on the second floor, between DR-2 and K-4, and a third camera in the basement room ST-1. Personnel entering through FP-0 window A were unable to confirm the existence of any of the rooms, nor of the three cameras, though the camera's locations inside SCP-083 were externally confirmed with EM sensors. Observation was conducted for a period of 48 hours, during which time no personnel were allowed to enter. No movements within SCP-083 or any of the rooms were observed, and the camera locations remained fixed. After 48 hours, agents were sent in to retrieve the three cameras, but only found one, the camera in FP-0, at its electronically confirmed location. The other two cameras, and the rooms in which they were placed, were gone with different rooms in their place. Despite this, the EM sensors continued to detect the electrical signatures of the other two cameras, indicating that they had not shifted position at all. Sweeps of SCP-083 were made hourly for the next 36 hours, and although further room arrangements were noted, neither of the rigged rooms reappeared, and after 36 hours, the signals diminished below detection thresholds, possibly due to a loss of battery power in the two missing cameras. Three weeks later, ST-1 recurred on the second floor, and its camera was recovered with a dead battery. The third camera remains missing. Note on number 083C memo. Dr. requested and was granted permission to repeat Experiment 083-03, cataloged as Experiment 083-05, which resulted in the similar inexplicable loss of six more cameras. While the Foundation is committed to the pursuit of scientific discovery, it has been decided to abandon further experimentation of this type on SCP-083 until a way can be found to do it without overdrafting the department's budget in order to replace disappeared equipment. Dr. Document 083-D On Agent conducted a walkthrough of SCP-083 and reported evidence of food preparation describing a sound like banging pots and pans, and the smell of cooking meat. Said agent was unable to localize the source of the phenomena, nor even to find a kitchen. Said agent did eventually encounter a dining room, designated DR-8, but it was clearly in a state of non-use. Agent estimated the sounds and smell persisted for approximately 20 minutes, before fading away. There were no other signs of intruders. Document 083-E On smoke was observed emanating from SCP-083's chimney. A Foundation agent was dispatched to investigate and found the location designated SR-12 with burning embers in the fireplace. SR-12 had been previously documented on SCP-083 Internal Surveys 5 and 6, but in both prior encounters the fireplace was cold and swept clean. Said agent recovered a partially burned fragment of newsprint from the fireplace data expunged, as well as the nub of a cigar. A sweep of SCP-083 found no other evidence of intruders, and a review of video surveillance confirmed no one else entering or leaving the house, aside from appropriate personnel at expected intervals. Agent remained on site until the fire was out, at which point smoke emanations ceased and did not recur. Said agent made no alterations to SR-12 and left the premises at 24 hours later. Said agent returned to SCP-083, but SR-12 was no longer present and has not been found on three subsequent walkthroughs. Analysis of the cigar did not produce any DNA, but did yield data expunged. Addendum Recommended SCP-083 be evaluated for upgrade to Euclid status. Approved. Item Number SCP-092 Object Class Safe
Special Containment Procedures The 3,125 instances of SCP-092 are to be held in individual cases suitable for containing non-anomalous audio compact discs, or CDs, and stored in standard inanimate object lockers at Site-37. Each instance is to be individually numbered with permanent marker. Testing of instances of SCP-092 is to be done in soundproof rooms. Only one instance of SCP-092 may be examined at a time. Only D-Class personnel are to listen to previously unexamined instances of SCP-092. Research proposals which involve non-D-Class personnel listening to instances of SCP-092 require written approval from Site Command. The cadaver of SCP-092-B is not currently considered anomalous, except by association and is preserved in the morgue freezer at Site-19. Description SCP-092 is a set of 3,125 audio CDs, each labeled the absolute, 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 absolute best of the fifth dimension, and marked with the names of the 31 performers who have at various times been part of the American singing group The Fifth Dimension. Each instance of SCP-092, when played in a standard CD player, will produce a distinct anomalous effect upon all individuals within hearing range. The anomalous phenomenon will last 74 minutes, the duration of a standard audio CD, during which time listeners will be unable to leave hearing range, or to shut off the CD player, or otherwise interrupt its function. As well, when the anomalous phenomenon finishes, all surviving listeners will engage in synchronized vocalization of the phrase, Wow, that was real cool. Synchronized vocalization has been observed in non-anglophones, pre-verbal infants, unconscious individuals, paralyzed individuals, and individuals physically incapable of speech due to laryngeal, lingual, and or buccal damage. The anomalous properties of each instance of SCP-092 are thematically and conceptually linked to the number 5, dimensions, and or the members of the 5th dimension. As of 871 instances of SCP-092 have been assessed, and their anomalous properties formally described. Representative Sample of Documented Anomalous Properties of Instances of SCP-092 Instance SCP-0928 Anomalous Property Listeners experience quintuple vision for all moving objects. Instance SCP-09241 Anomalous Property Listeners' bodies exude pentagonal crystals of elemental boron, chemical element number 5. Crystals cease materializing upon conclusion of CD, but do not dematerialize. Instance SCP-09242 Anomalous Property Listeners' bodies exude pentagonal ingots of elemental manganese, chemical element number 25, or 5 to the power of 2. Ingots cease materializing upon conclusion of CD, but do not dematerialize. Listeners succumb to acute manganese poisoning within 24 hours. Instance SCP-09243 Anomalous Property Listeners' bodies exude pentagonal nodules of elemental cesium, chemical element number 55. All listeners killed by cesium burns within 8 minutes. Instance SCP-09279 Anomalous Property Listeners become physiologically 5 years old. Instance SCP-09280 Anomalous Property Listeners become physiologically five months old. Instance SCP-09281 Anomalous Property Listeners become physiologically five weeks old. Instance SCP-09282 Anomalous Property Listeners become physiologically five days old. Instance SCP-09287 Anomalous Property Listeners spontaneously become five months pregnant Pregnancy spontaneously miscarry upon conclusion of CD. In initial tests, all male listeners succumb to massive internal hemorrhaging within 10 minutes, as do three female listeners. Surviving female listeners succumb to organ damage within four days. Postmortem genetic analysis shows that all fetuses were identical and are not related to the listeners. Instance SCP-092-126 Anomalous Property Listeners experience unbearably painful facial spasms, characterized by constant chewing and biting motions, 
symptoms of trigeminal neuralgia caused by inflammation of the fifth cranial nerve. During initial test, all listeners batter themselves into unconsciousness against walls of testing chamber in attempt to escape the pain. Instance, SCP-092-175, anomalous property. Listeners' bodies are pentasected radially, producing five disconnected segments, which remain alive and mobile. Instance SCP-092-176 Anomalous property Listeners' bodies are pentasected laterally, producing five disconnected segments, which remain alive and mobile. Instance SCP-092-177 Anomalous property Listeners' bodies are pentasected axially, producing five disconnected segments, which remain alive and mobile. Instance SCP-092-200 Anomalous property Listeners are teleported to a site on the surface of Himalaya, the fifth most massive moon of Jupiter, fifth planet from the Sun. Listeners are returned upon conclusion of CD, but succumb to the combined effects of hypothermia, hypoxia, and radiation poisoning within three hours. Requests have been made to use SCP-092-200 to send exploration teams equipped with environment suits to Himalaya. Approval is pending. Instance, SCP-092-256 Anomalous property Listeners are converted into two-dimensional forms. Instance, SCP-092-271 Anomalous property Listeners spontaneously lose five teeth each. Teeth do not regrow after conclusion of CD. Instance, SCP-092-272 Anomalous property Listeners spontaneously lose all but five teeth each. Teeth do not regrow after conclusion of CD. Instance SCP-092-273 Anomalous property Listeners spontaneously lose five fingernails each. Fingernails do not regrow after conclusion of CD. Instance SCP-092-274 Anomalous Property Listeners spontaneously lose five toenails each. Toenails do not regrow after conclusion of CD. Instance SCP-092-278 Anomalous Property Listeners spontaneously grow three extra eyes each for a total of five. Extra eyes do not dematerialize upon conclusion of CD. Eyes are functional and of the same color as listener's original eyes. D-0927714, who had lost an eye in a fight prior to entering Foundation custody, grew four extra eyes when listening to SCP-092-278. Instance, SCP-092-279, anomalous property. Listeners experience topological deformation, such that their height becomes the circumference of their waist, and vice versa. Deformation reverts at conclusion of CD. This appears to be an exchange between listener's dimension of height and dimension of width. Instance, SCP-092-285, anomalous property. Listeners sneeze five times per minute for the duration of the CD. Instance, SCP-092-286, anomalous property. Listeners belch five times per minute for the duration of the CD. Instance, SCP-092-287, Anomalous Property Listeners hiccup five times per minute for the duration of the CD. Instance, SCP-092-288, Anomalous Property Listeners cough five times per minute for the duration of the CD. Instance, SCP-092-315, Anomalous Property Listeners find themselves within the 2010 Lars von Trier film Dimension, where they are able to interact with the setting but not affect the actions of the characters. Since Dimension is only 27 minutes in duration, the events within the film repeat 2.74 times. Instance SCP-092-316 Listeners find themselves within the 1993 East Enders Doctor Who crossover, Dimensions in Time, where they are able to interact with the setting but not affect the actions of the characters. Since the two parts of Dimensions in Time are only 13 minutes in total duration, the events within the episodes repeat 5.69 times. Instance, SCP-092-317 Anomalous Property 
listeners find themselves within the 1963 Italian film Amore in Quattro Dimensioni, where they are able to interact with the setting but not affect the actions of the characters. Instance, SCP-092-397, Anomalous Property. Listeners experience random moments in the life of Alan Shepard, the fifth man to walk on the moon. Instance, SCP-092-399, Anomalous Property. Listeners experience random moments in the life of James Monroe, the fifth president of the United States. Instance, SCP-092-400, Anomalous Property. Listeners experience random moments in the life of Mackenzie Bowl, the fifth Prime Minister of Canada. Instance, SCP-092-401, Anomalous Property. Listeners experience random moments in the life of Edward Sega, the fifth Prime Minister of Jamaica. Instance, SCP-092-402, Anomalous Property. Listeners experience random moments in the life of Charan Singh, the fifth Prime Minister of India. Instance, SCP-092-403, Anomalous Property. Listeners experience random moments in the life of Helen Hayes, the fifth winner of the Academy Award for Best Actress. Instance, SCP-092-466, Anomalous Property. Listeners are physically transformed into members of the original lineup of the fifth dimension, as they were at the time of the group's establishment in 1966. Instance, SCP-092-467, Anomalous Property. Listeners are physically transformed into members of the original lineup of the fifth dimension, as they were at the time of the original group's dissolution in 1975. Instance, SCP-092-468, Anomalous Property. Listeners are physically transformed into members of the original lineup of the fifth dimension, as they were at the time of the original group's reunion in 1990. Instance, SCP-092-469, Anomalous Property. Listeners are physically transformed into members of the original lineup of the fifth dimension, as they are today. Listeners who transform into Ron Townsend, 1933-2001, resume their original forms after conclusion of CD, but do not resurrect. When an instance of SCP-092 is inserted into the CD drive of a personal computer, its files can be accessed without triggering the anomalous effects. Examination of the files indicates that each CD has different content. All content is audio material by or pertaining to the fifth dimension and its individual members. In addition to all known commercially released songs, files contain live performances, practice sessions, auditions, media interviews, and personal conversations. Acquisition Log On May 5th, an unidentified man, henceforth SCP-092-B, carrying two suitcases, approached front gate guards at Site-19 and stated that he wished to surrender himself and his anomalous creations into Foundation custody. The contents of his suitcases were confiscated and classed as SCP-092. SCP-092-B was transferred to Site-37 for interrogation. During interrogation, SCP-092-B revealed the thematic connections, five dimensions, and the fifth dimension between all instances of SCP-092 and then committed suicide. Transcript of statement made by SCP-092-B upon arrival at Site-19. Guard. Sir, this is private property. You can't... SCP-092-B. This is a secret foundation site, right? Guard. You can't come in here, sir. I, SCP-092-B, you're the SCP Foundation, and I'm a failure. Guard, what was that, sir? SCP-092-B, you're the SCP Foundation, and I'm a failure. I think I'm clever, but I'm not. I'm a stupid, boring, nickel turny hack who thinks that money and cheap puns can take the place of talent and inspiration. I'm tasteless. I'm dull. I'm incompetent. I have no sense of style, and the only reason I'm not an art criminal is that nothing I've ever made is even close to being art. You can secure me, and you can contain me, but no one can protect me. Please take me and my anomalous garbage into custody. At this point, guards summoned backup. SCP-092-B repeated this statement verbatim until he was taken into custody. 
Excerpt from transcript of SCP-092-B interrogation session number two. Interviewer. Yes, we understand about fiveness, thank you. That's been most helpful. But we were also wondering what you could tell us about how you made these. SCP-092-B. I just wanted to be cool, you know? I really did. I thought, well, I had my inheritance and my collection, and there was the estate and the abandoned museum, and so much of the stuff went together, and it wasn't that tough, and... Look, my ideas were better than yours. They were. I know they were. No, they're not. Nobody's impressed by this stupid, facile wordplay. It's not even good wordplay. It's kindergarten-level paranomasia. Oh, look. Five dimensions. What other things can you think of that come in fives? I'm worthless. I'm worthless. Interviewer. Better than my ideas? SCP-092-B. There's no deeper meaning to what I did. It's all just superficial Potemkin village crap pumping imitation shit into the river of human achievement. It's Stein's f***ing Oakland, and I don't even f***ing understand those f***ing illusions. I'm an uninspired wannabe. I'm boring. I'm a useless hack with no f***ing imagination. I've wasted and ruined miracles. I've squandered so much raw material that better people could have done so much with. I just... I'm not cool. I never will be. I'm really sorry about the mess. These aren't my arms. At this point, SCP-092-B seized his own head with both hands and ripped it off his neck, killing himself instantly. SCP-093-T2 Mirror Tests Testing Protocols Subjects testing SCP-093 must wear a Class 3 buckle harness strapped to the chest and attached to a tension pulley system, allowing for 300 meters or roughly 1,000 feet of movement. Additional spools may be added to extend movement if necessary. The clasps connecting these spools must be high grade and capable of withstanding applied force of 0.2 tons. A field kit containing the following should be standard issue for testing of SCP-093. 1. Wrist-mounted light source with 3 hours lifespan and additional power sources providing up to 6 additional hours. 4. 0.5 liter water bottles with water. 4 MREs of any type, plus 2 plain granola bars. Chocolate chips allowed. 1. Standard issue Beretta 9mm firearm with 24 rounds of ammunition. Loaded. This is not to be issued until subject has passed into a mirror using SCP-093 and should be given under armed supervision, ensuring that the subject passes through entirely. This item is to be requisitioned first upon subject's return, and subject to be made aware of this before leaving line of sight within SCP-093's mirror. One standard issue field knife. The subject is not to be made aware of this item, and must find it on his own within the kit. The subject must also be attached to a video system, with the camera mounted on the subject's head or shoulders. The video device should be cable-based and allow for the same length of travel as the return system. Wireless cameras have shown mixed results and should only be used in testing conditions, where SCP-093 is a currently known color. New colors must be tested using wired feed. During testing, the color of SCP-093 must be recorded as well as history of the subject in terms of their incarceration to identify how SCP-093 determines the color to assume. A link appears to be connected to guilt, or a lack thereof, in the subject's psyche. The attached test results should be read in order. Mirror Test 1. Color, Blue. Subject is D-20384, male, 34 years of age, strong physique. Subject's background shows instance of murder and attempted suicide. Subject is cooperative in all steps of testing. Subject entered the provided mirror while holding SCP-093, which emitted a blue color. Outside, technicians observed that the mirror retained a true reflection until subject had completely passed into it, at which time the view changed to an outdoor landscape, heavily tinged in blue. Video feed follows in attached media. Camera activates flickers to view. Subject is looking out over the same field reported by technicians. Looks like typical lowland plains. Everything has a heavy blue tinge overlapping the normal colors. No discernible landmarks visible as subject pans view left to right, 
Only grass, weeds, and a breeze moving the taller grass. No trees, no living beings visible. Subject moves forward as instructed, traveling for approximately 500 steps before something becomes visible. A patch of the land up ahead is barren, and grass can be seen dying as subject approaches it. Approximately 300 steps forward, subject is standing before a hole in the ground. The hole has been dug using unknown tools of primitive origin. Pulley system engaged, and the camera suffers a light shutter. Subject is instructed to enter the hole, and after mild protesting, agrees to do so. There is no apparent method of descent such as ladder or rope. Subject relies entirely on his own hands and the pulley system to slow the descent. Approximately 100 meters of cable is used before a bottom is reached. Light source provided in field kit activated 50 meters down when outside sources become unreliable. Sweeping gestures of the light reveal nothing more than dirt, even at the bottom of the hole. Subject moves forward with assistance of light source. Asked about the blue tinge, subject expresses confusion and says there is no such tinge from his perspective, and never was. Light is visible down the passage, and 150 meters of cable has been used. Out of the camera's eye, sound is recorded of the firearm being prepared. When questioned about these actions, subject states justified precaution and moves forward. The tunnel turns from bare dirt to a concrete enclosure. Subject complains of a stench. The light source is revealed to be sealing light fixtures, a series of which with less than a quarter broken, while the others function. A series of six doors, three to a side, span before the camera view, with a seventh door visible at the end of the corridor that has been blocked by what looks like generic metal shelving debris. Debris shows signs of rusting and is typical of retail store units, suggesting other human presences. Subject requested to try doors in whatever order he chooses. Subject tries first door on the right. Door is locked, does not open. Second door tries to open but does not budge. Unlocked, but blocked. Closing second door. Third door is tried. Same results as first. Going up the other side, the third door does open fully, and light is bright in the room. Portable light switched off at this time as subject pans camera to inspect room. Room is bare, no contents, but walls are filthy. Subject states material on walls isn't dirt, but he can't identify it. Seems to resemble melted plastic, but is brown in color rather than black. Door is closed. Second door on left side has no handle, does not move when pushed. The hole where the handle was is plugged by unknown material. All doors are shaped in such a way that nothing can visibly escape from the sides, and space for movement is too thin to look through, even at ground level. First door on left hand is locked, but part of key is present in lock from stem to the ridges. The back has been broken off. With effort, subject manipulates key to open door, and immediately begins coughing, complaining of a stench. Walls of room are clean, as is floor. Ceiling is coated in the same strange brown material as the third room. In this room, there is a makeshift cot made from aged blankets with a pillow, a wooden crate containing open boxes of what appears to have been foodstuffs. Language appears on video as squiggles. However, subject states they simply read cereal. A second crate in the room contains what appears to be empty water bottles that have dried out. A book lays next to the cot, closed, no title or identifying marks. On the wall is what appears to be clipped articles, but language cannot be read. Subject asks to remove clippings for retrieval. All articles but one crumble at the touch due to age. The intact article is put in a field sample container and seems the most recent compared to the others. Asked to investigate the book, subject begins to move toward it. Audio on the tape goes strange, and a high-pitched screeching noise like grinding metal dominates all communication for 3.5 seconds. Subject has not touched the book still, and when the noise stops, subject asks Control to repeat request. Control made no requests during that time as headsets were removed. Subject advised to leave room, and notes that the door has begun closing slowly on its own, and if left alone, will close. Subject advised to leave door alone, and to investigate door on right. Careful review of the following 10 seconds of tape shows that as the camera pans, 
A figure is visible at the end of the tunnel where the seventh door is. The door is open, only enough for a face to be seen through a crack just before the door silently closes. No details can be seen. Subject investigates the second door on the right with no mention of anything out of the ordinary. This door, when pushed against, moves, and after repeated bashings, moves enough to view inside at an angle. A corkboard is visible with more articles attached to it. The top of a box of cereal can be seen on the floor, and what appears to be a hand laying palm up. Subject closes door and pans camera past door 7, which remains closed. Seeing nowhere else to explore, subject requested to return. Subject poses no protest and complains of ever-increasing stench. As subject returns back down tunnel, his camera feed does not change or show anomaly, but control reports a sudden surge in cable movement, pulling an additional 100 meter of cable through before going slack again and then tightening. Video feed shows subject ascending tunnel slowly while control attempts to verify integrity of the pulley system. Subject requested to stop ascent, but states he is not climbing. The rope is pulling him up. Panic sets in on both sides, and subject informed to ready firearm. Upon reaching top of hole, nothing is visible on camera, and subject reports nothing has changed in landscape, then begins a return trip following the path of the cable. Traveling for approximately 900 steps, subject asks how much cable he has used. Control admits they are unsure due to complications, but subject traveled in a straight line to reach the hole, so it should be a straight line back. Subject becomes concerned when he states that more cable is visible now, moving in a 90 degree angle, away from a point in the ground. Subject pans camera around full circle slowly. On film, behind subject, a crowd of 37 countable figures stand silently. Features are unidentifiable, and they are lacking the blue tinge that dominates the landscape. Panic breaks in control again, but subject notes only oddity as being the cable having an angled path. Subject tugs his end of the cable. It is taut and does not move. Control begins to reel in the pulley system, and slack rapidly winds. Watching the angled cable, movement can be seen, as grass is disturbed further down the angled portion from the reeling in. Then the line vibrates as it meets resistance and emits a twang from the recoil. Subject's camera pans back a long length of cable, which now appears to slowly be allowing more slack, before suddenly all slack is returned and pulley system begins again. Control requests subject return following cable path, and screams are caught on the audio, with panic from subject. Five shots fired as subject aims pistol at something not visible on camera. Control reports being able to see subject returning toward point of origin, while camera shows wire disappearing into a point, floating in the air. As subject passes this point, all cable is now in the pulley system, and camera films only the floor. Control reports that the mirror took approximately five seconds to return to a reflection, and SCP-093 remained blue in color until one hour after being recovered from subject. A vile-smelling fluid was present on subject's clothes around his hands when firearm was recovered. This fluid dried quickly and was deemed insignificant of study due to lack of quality sample. Control personnel monitoring the mirror state having seen a massive human being crawling on the ground, easily 50 times the size of a normal person with no facial features and a very short arm reach pulling itself toward the mirror before it returned to a reflection. Due to proximity, fine details could not be made out, but at least one observer noted the being appeared to have been shot from the marks in the otherwise smooth, featureless face. Field test kit recovered from subject, containing a newspaper article that reads, Data expunged, and was filed as item data expunged. The next test is classified as the green test. Mirror test 2. Color. Green. Subject is D54493, female, 23 years of age, average physique. Subject's background shows instance of Grand Theft Auto and second-degree murder of two children during escape with vehicle. Subject is cooperative in all steps of testing. Subject entered the provided mirror while holding SCP-093, which emitted a green color. Outside, technicians observed that the mirror retained a true reflection until subject had completely passed into it, at which time 
the view changed to a farming landscape, heavily tinged in green, similar to the first test. Video feed follows an attached media. Camera activates, flickers to view. Subject is looking out over the same farmland reported by technicians. All greens through video feed are deeper, and green tinge overlays the normal colors of objects similar to the blue tinge in test one. No landmarks from test one are discernible, as subject pants camera over area. Present is a field, long abandoned, in the middle of which stands the remains of a scarecrow of unknown design, fragments left are rotted and torn. Nothing grows in the tilled land. A farmhouse is visible to the right of the field, large, two stories. A basement shelter entrance is visible at one end. Subject prepares her sidearm immediately and is asked by control to relax before proceeding, her heavy breathing dominating the audio feed. Subject takes a few minutes and announces that she's fine, then proceeds as directed to walk the perimeter of the farmhouse. Children's bicycles, two, a boy's and girl's, lay against the house near the shelter doors. One of the doors to the shelter lay in the grass, torn from the entrance, as evidenced by splintering wood. On the stairs lay clothes, arranged, in a descending order, shoes to shirt going down them, belonging to a boy. Subject begins screaming at Control, asking if this is some sort of sick joke. Control assures her they have never seen this environment either, and to please calm down. Subject takes several minutes to regain herself before continuing. It is unknown if SCP-093 is linking the subject's past with her landscape. After several minutes, subject agrees to continue. Communication to subject is muted, and conversation of control making commentary about subject's jittery attitude make up audio for one and a half minutes. Communication restored as subject reaches bottom of stairs. The cellar of the farmhouse is unremarkable and typical. Several wooden shelves line the far wall containing unidentified canned substances. Broken light fixtures sway gently from support beams. Camera is panned across the basement slowly. No evidence of footprints are visible, and the basement can be assumed to have been abandoned for some time. Subject begins to comment about a stench. As subject pans the area, a metal hatch is visible in the ground, similar to a bulkhead on a submarine with a turn handle. Subject remarks that the smell is at its worst around the hatch, and the dirt around the hatch is noted as being clumped and clay-like. The handle of the hatch is old, and the paint chipped. Subject coerced into turning the handle which, when fully turned, opens the hatch. Subject begins coughing at the release of assumed old, stale air. When camera is tilted to view down the hatch, it is a white concrete tunnel, similar to the one found in the blue experiment, but in much better condition. Subject asks to descend ladder and close hatch behind her. After some convincing, subject agrees to descend, but does not close the hatch. Overlooked concerns about severing the pulley return system in doing so are acknowledged. Descent down the ladder and trip to the farmhouse has consumed approximately 53 meters of cable when bottom is reached. The inside of the hatch appears to be a bunker, ill-suited to long-term storage. It is spacious, about half the size of the actual cellar itself, containing three bunks, one for a couple and two for single use. Several boxes of food similar to those found during Blue marked as cereal fill a waste container near the hatch bottom. On the beds are two skeletons, and on the floor is a third, lying next to which is a simple six-shooter revolver containing no ammunition. Three spent casings are across the floor near the gun. On the other side of this skeleton is a bound book in good condition. This is retrieved and placed into a field kit container upon request. The gun is left alone, per request from control. Subject examines more of the bunker, focusing on a desk where a newspaper has been cut and is in good condition. The clipped articles are recovered using a field kit container. Little else of interest to be brought back is in the bunker, as the camera is panned around. Trash bags containing clothing, a few children's toys resembling popular 1950s era products are lined against the wall. Subject is requested to leave the bunker, and then sharply asked to wait by a control technician who directs the camera view to an area near the exiting doorway to the hatch. Closer inspection as subject moves in finds that a small area has been fitted with what appears to be an ethernet jack, the cover of which has been forced slightly away from the wall by a strange amber-like substance. 
Subject refuses to touch or collect a sample, commenting that it stinks so bad that if they want it, they can come get it themselves. Control declines, and Subject leaves bunker. As Subject grips ladder to leave, the camera pans up for a moment, and at the top of the tunnel, a humanoid figure is seen peering down. Control asks Subject to confirm figure. Subject states nothing is up there, and begins to climb. Figure draws out of camera view after first rung is touched by Subject, who ascends without incident. At the top of the tunnel, no other life is seen. Nothing has been disturbed. Subject insists nothing was there and closes the hatch, then immediately vomits. Subject coughs and uses a supplied water bottle to gargle, then freezes and asks if Control is hearing that. Control reports no audio. Subject approaches cellar hatch cautiously, with firearm drawn, and lifts her head just enough so camera can view outside area. In the distance, approximately 700 meters from the farm, two massive humanoid beings are crawling across the landscape. The entities do not notice the subject, who remains quiet, but whose drawn sidearm is visibly trembling. Subject requested to remain still and silent as beings move. They are featureless facing at an angle moving across the field of vision so the faces are only visible for a few moments. During this time, it is clear they have no facial features. The arms they use to drag themselves are short at times and long at others, stretching out to varying lengths each time they move. There is no rear area to the beings. All bodily design appears to end at the torso. The two creatures take approximately 10 minutes to disappear into the distance before the subject begins to panic and begs to return. Request declined. Subject instructed to enter the home from the cellar and not to leave the home under any circumstances. The first floor is entered through a hatch in the ceiling or floor that opens with rusty creaks that cause subject to pause for 37 seconds before continuing upward and entering a kitchen. A heavy layer of dust coats all items in the kitchen. The refrigerator is left open. All food is spoiled. Adjacent the kitchen is a living area that subject enters slowly. There is a recliner, a couch, and a television, all of 1950s style design. In the recliner is a laptop whose case also resembles 1950s decor and is coated in heavy dust. Opening the laptop reveals the last moments of its operating system, Faithful OS, leaving a standby mode and immediately shutting off. Laptop has no external power source and will not power back on. When asked to recover laptop, it brings the cushion of the recliner with it, the two stuck together. Subject advised to leave laptop where it is. The inside door leaving the home is nailed shut with thick wood planks. No attempts made to interact with these. Camera view pans to a staircase leading upstairs. Subject ascends the stairs without being asked, and the stairs remain silent to control surprise. When subject reaches top of stairs, a hallway with two doors is viewed, one on each side, and at the end of the hall, a dumbwaiter is inlaid into the wall. Subject opens door on left on her own, which opens to a master bedroom. The bed is neatly made, but the wardrobe next to it is thrown open, and clothes are everywhere on the floor. Subject finds laid out on the bed several pieces of jewelry and is informed to leave them. Subject begins to protest, then comments they stink and leaves them alone, promptly leaving the room. Subject asks to open second door. The second door opens and gives a view of a shared children's bedroom, obviously boy and girl given the types of toys and clothes scattered on the floor. There is also a window, which subject approaches and wipes with a curtain to clear dust. Subject requested to move camera to window and does so. The farmland is visible and approximately 40 kilometers from it, at best guess, a city. As the camera starts to draw back, it pans down and films the area around the house. Approximately 300 figures, similar to those from the footage captured during blue test, are visible around the home, all staring up. Subject asked to confirm figures, but states nothing is there. Subject requested to return and quickly agrees. Egress from the house is uneventful. Pulley system shows no erratic behavior. As subject returns to point of pulley wire's origin, a loud groaning noise causes the picture to reverberate. 
Technicians at Control report they were also able to hear the noise and experienced the vibration. Subject returns through point of origin without investigation, and Mirror returns to reflective surface. SCP-093 relinquished. Video ends. Return to newspaper fragments filed as The next test is classified as the Violet Test. Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.